as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, my beloved, with you I am well pleased. Here ends the scripture reading. Thanks be to God. A moment of clarity. It is my prayer and hope that this morning, as I share this passage with you, that you may also hear the voice from above that says, you are my beloved, you are my daughter, you are my son, whom I am well pleased. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Sermon is done. <laughs> Today is baptism of the Lord Sunday. All right, it's time to remember our baptism. I love this every year. Um, we baptize a lot of people over the years here, right? Water gives life. We can't imagine life without water. We're going to get wet today. Without water, we are finished. <laughs> we need water. It's really nice to have a baptism of the Lord Sunday on a rainy Sunday morning. <laughs> we really needed some rain, and it really felt good. You know, yesterday as the water or the rain was pouring, I said to myself when I was thinking about my sermon, like, this is perfect. Every, all the universe is coming together for this Sunday, right? Right now, at Jordan River, you know, it's, that's the uh, border between Jordan and Israel. On this very day right now, um, a lot of pilgrims are uh, flocking to that part of that region and are being baptized under the watch of military guards, right, because of the border. And they're being baptized. There's a little dispute where the origin of real baptism took place, you know, whether it was on the Jordan side or whether it was on the Israel side, because it's a very important debate because it means huge tourist industry, <laughs> right? It draws a lot of people. So um, Jordan is claiming that, that that particular side is the origin of Christianity because that's where the, Jesus, on their side of the river, was where Jesus was baptized. Well, I really, my, my goal this morning in my message is to invite you to go to that place, not necessarily on Jordan's side or Israeli side, but before all this border stuff happened, I want us to be in that place several centuries ago when Jesus was baptized, okay? Didn't have the middle life, uh, not middle life, midlife, um, um, Middle East, I'm sorry, Middle East crisis at the time, right? But it had a different kind of, of well, I suppose there are similar dynamics of, of political problems with Roman Empire at the time. But it was a, at a place at the time where there was a tremendous amount of oppression and, and, and suffering, right? And so people start to have these apocalyptic vision and people were driven into the desert in frenzy and prayer and you had these small communities of, 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 of people. Um, but John was one of them and there were many like John the Baptist. And so they gather at Jordan River that something was going to happen. People were suffering and the prayers were being offered. And the scripture here says, the heavens tore open. And it's a response to this particular oppressive suffering situation. And, and here are people gathered in that desert by the Jordan River, and John is baptizing. So imagine all that's happening, okay? Imagine. Go to that place. Go to that place. I know we have uh, our annual meeting after worship service. And committee reports, and what we've done this past year, and you know, we are worshiping in this beautiful worship space. Before the church, before the birth of church, let's, let's put aside everything. Put aside everything. Go back to the very beginning, very beginning of what prior to the institutional church was all about, right? Go back to that place. You're among those crowd, the people there at the Jordan. Jesus is being baptized. You're there getting ready to be baptized. You know, how do you feel? Do you, how many of you remember your own baptism? Anybody? Oh, there are actually people who were, remember their baptism. The vast majority of us were baptized when we were infant, right? 
so because it's our Presbyterian tradition to baptize kids, right? And that we, as a community, will nurture that child in, in, in faith. But there are some of us here who were baptized as an adult. And that's, a, that's a good thing. You could actually remember the baptism, while most of us are not able to remember uh, our baptism. But baptism is a very, very important part of our church sacrament. And the reason why it's such an important part of our, our church practice is because when you go back to that place when Jesus was baptized, when the heavens torn open, right? And a voice came from above and said, you are my son, my beloved, whom I am well pleased. It is not only an affirmation, but it is a climatic point of Jesus in his life as an adult to be affirmed, to hear that voice in that baptism, right? Do you remember your baptismal vows? You remember your baptismal vows, right? That our commitment, we are incorporated into the body of Christ. We share the baptism of Jesus, right? To say that we share the baptism of Jesus is to say that you and I are basically what? A child of God. Today's message is actually an extension of last Sunday's message. I am a child of God, deserving of love and respect, and God would use me to change the world. It's not only an affirmation, but if you look at the context of the passage today, immediately after the baptism of Jesus, what happens? The heavens torn open, is God's way of responding to the suffering people, empowers Jesus with what? The Holy Spirit. And led by the Spirit of God, he is led into where? Oh, some of you are biblical scholars, you know what happens next. The context of this baptism is that he is in full power of the Holy Spirit, right? To say that I'm a child of God is to be empowered by the Spirit of God and led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness, right? And throughout his ministry, no matter what challenges he faced, what sustains his ministry, where he derives his strength is what? this affirmation, this understanding, this moment of clarity that I am God's beloved, God's child, right? That becomes his base, his foundation for the very missional work that he's engaged. So, going back, we're all at Jordan River, we're baptized, and we hear the voice of God calling us, you are my child, my beloved. Whenever I think about this beloved and, and, and child or or relationship. I think of my sons uh, because they were here would spend some time with me. There's nothing they could add to their life that would say that um, um, to verify or to, to make it more significant that they're my child, right? It doesn't matter. We are simply, they are simply my son, okay? They, they will go through life and sometimes they will fall and sometimes they will succeed, but their success or well, their failures are not going to make them any more less or any more my son. They're my beloved. They're my son. Nothing we could add or subtract in what we do in our lives will undermine the basic foundation of who we are as children of God. You are my daughter and my son. We are God's beloved. So, baptism. Before some of you fall asleep, you know, it's like a, whenever I begin to preach, it's like a anesthesia or something, right? <laughs> Baptism. I have here a little branch with me. Some of you may remember your baptism, and some of you may not remember your baptism. But it's important for us to remember that we share one baptism. We are all God's children. We share one baptism, one baptism. We share one mission, and that is to bring the kingdom of God here on earth. Before any of this happened, imagine yourself standing next to Jesus, being baptized, being affirmed as a child of God, and trying our best to live out the baptismal covenant that we have made 
not only as children, but as an adult. So that's what this is all about. That's what we are all about. We are united by one baptism. We are, have one call to serve God and to serve our world. We have been called. So remember your baptism. Do you feel it? Yeah. Okay. Forget my message. Just remember the sprinkling of water. Okay. I only do this once a year, so bear with me. Here, remember your baptism. Did you feel that? Okay. Remember your baptism. Remember your baptism. We all share from the one font here. There's no, um, we don't have a huge tourist crowd here to this font here. But for the past over 50 years, many have come to this place to be baptized. You, know, you remember your friends, your children who were baptized here? And the baptism. To a fir- affirmation that we are God's children. Here we go. Okay. For decades, you may remember your loved ones being baptized here, our loved ones. When the world says you're not good enough or you don't have enough, God says, no. You're more than enough. You're my child, my beloved. That's how it all started. It all started from that place, from our baptism. We share the unity of Christ as one body, as baptized children of God. So may this truth, as the challenge for us really is this as a church, to live into this truth of who we really are as God's children, deserving of love and respect, and to transform the world, to change the world as God would use us, empowered by the Spirit of God. That's God's response to the world. The heavens tore open, and God coming down in the power of the Holy Spirit upon Jesus, upon the church, upon us. You know? Do you feel it? We are empowered by the Spirit of God, led by the Spirit of God. And so, may God be with each and every one of us as we begin our new year to do our work together, united in one baptism and one faith as united church, the body of Christ. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for you have called us to the Jordan River to be baptized. We remember the baptism of Christ who began his ministry with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit as a response to the cries and the needs of the world. We ask you for your blessing upon each and every one of us. You know where we are today, where we've been, and where we hope to be in the future. Empower us, O God. Help us to live into the truth of who we are as your beloved. We thank you for this day. In remembrance of the baptism of Christ, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.